Welcome back, everybody, to the GGBL. We got Phoenix hosting Boston at the Burnside Dome. That, well, on the side of the Burnside Dome, there's a hole right in the wall. I didn't see that until I saved this episode, until I saved this game. Can't go back now, just got to run with it. But I'll talk to you guys in a minute here about the stadium itself. But as we see Jonathan Davis here leading off a home run against Rico Ramos Jr., the custom lefty. He's got to find himself here. He's been having a solid season so far, a solid month of April, but so far, Boston is coming out swinging the hot sticks, trying to take it to this young lefty. As Robbie Grossman gets in with a double. Next batter, Carlos Correa with nobody down still. They still don't have anybody out. Relay throw comes in all the way past the cutoff man, and Rico Ramos officially gives up two runs. Two earned in the top of the first inning. Let's go to the bottom of the first, and we have a nice play here to end the first inning for Jared Cherry, another custom lefty. You guys like your custom left-handed players here. Renato Nunez is going to strike out here in the bottom of the second inning, and then we see a nice little play in the outfield grass from second baseman. Look at that little spin move, and right on the money, right on target. Good throw. And Cherry in the bottom in the bottom of the second. Here's got two outs, and then we see second baseman make another fantastic play. Let's get the GG9 replay going, man. Look at this. Still no hits in the second. I always like to look at that, even though I know deep down odds of getting a no hitter are not high, not likely. I always do like to notice it. Just just take notice here. We got what 21 outs left. 21 outs left. Look at this play on defense. Every no-hitter needs some solid defense. And right now, things are looking good, but I think I just ruined it. I think I ruined it. We got a base knock here in the bottom of the fourth inning for a double. That would be Jesse Winker ending Jared Cherry's little push at a no-no. Little ground ball here to first base, and they take care of it. Good defense all the way around. Good hitting all the way around for Boston so far. We're at the top of the fifth inning, and we got a little gap shot here. Going to go all the way to the wall, and that's a deep part of the Burnside Dome. Little relay coming in here. They're going to throw home, but it's way off line, and Hidalgo is going to score. Standing up and inside the park home run, the first of the GGBL, at least in gameplay. Who knows what the heck happened there in simulation. But either way, Rico Ramos walks off the mound, giving up three earned runs. And unfortunately, his day is done. David Hess comes in and gives up a two-run shot to Mike Ford. This guy has been on fire. He's got six home runs now. And he's one of the lead leaders in that category. Let's go to the bottom half of the inning. And Robinson Chirinos going to hit a solo home run to get his guys back in it. But Charlie Culberson, can he do back-to-back? -back? No, he's just a little bit foul here. Cherry goes up and in again, and Culberson says, not going to miss this time. Solo home run. Is Phoenix coming back here a little bit? 5-2. to two. We'll see what Boston has cooking for him. It's 5-4 to four here now, guys. Deep shot here to left field. And that is Edward Olivares for his second of the season. And that's going to do it. Boston will end up scoring a few more runs, make it 8-4. to four, And Cherry gets a win. Rico Ramos saddled with the loss, unfortunately. 15 hits given up for Phoenix. Boston really doing really, really well offensively. Guys, one thing I wanted to notice, and one other thing I wanted to mention about the Burnside Dome, as we see Alec Boehm uh, doing a little dance. It's interesting. One thing about the Burnside Dome, guys, we'll get into this matchup with Chicago and Columbus, but the Create a Stadium feature does not actually let you create a dome. So you kind of have to make it artificially. So we see a nice play here out in right field. But you have to make the domes artificially. You have to, like, basically cover the stadium like surround it with a bunch of like squares and assets like scoreboards even at the very top they, they won't actually make you enclose a stadium you actually have to have the sun shining down on the stadium pretty weird but just to let you know kind of what was going on with the burnside dome so there is a little feature there where you can put some concourse at the top try to make it got that dome effect 
so on and so forth. But, all right, guys, let's get into this matchup here. Columbus and Chicago. We're in the top of the second inning, and look at this play. Man, that's a great play from center fielder, and Wojciechowski says, I got to love that, man. Good defense all the way around for Chicago so far. Lindor to second base, back over to first. Double play. That's going to keep Columbus in the game here. We've got a shot off the wall. It's going to come in for a double. Columbus is threatening just a little bit here, but a line drive to third base. That's Alec Bohm, makes the nice play. Logan Forsythe, strike three. Sit down, me. Diego Garcia did not have a great outing. <laughs> we see another line drive to third base. Diego Garcia did not have a great outing against Indiana the first time that we saw him. He's having a little bit better of one in this one. But then again, Columbus is, they, they've just, they've got some issues offensively. They're just really not coming through against against pitchers that just are finding grooves, man. They're, they're, uh, they're susceptible to that. Little bunt attempt here. Throw off balance. Does make the throw. One down. Runners on second and third. And we got a base knock right past first baseman. They're not going to try the runner from second to home. They're going to hold him up at third. And it's one to nothing. Danny Mendick with the RBI single. One nothing. Chicago. Logan Forsythe. Back up again. He's going to ground out into a double play. He's already got a strikeout and a double play grounded into. Not a very good moment. And a good game here for Logan Forsythe. Wojciechowski is still dealing. And this is a very important game for both squads. Columbus currently sitting two games back from Chicago. And right now, it's looking like it's all Chicago. Yes, it's been very close the whole way through. But now in this later inning, in these later innings, I should say, it's starting to become a Chicago, uh, leaning towards a Chicago victory here. So 2 nothing. Columbus had an opportunity there to tack on some runs, but they couldn't get it done. Little ground ball here for Columbus, and they stay within the ball game. Two down here in the bottom of the eighth. Little fly ball out to left field, giving chase. They make the play. And Carl Edwards Jr. says, I got to come on here and get it done. That's going to be a strikeout on Frankie Lindor, another strikeout here, and another strikeout to end the game. So three straight strikeouts, and Chicago gets the win. Man, you know what? The thing with Chicago is, guys, is that I say it all the time, I feel like, but you can't help it. Chicago Breeze love to make people whiff. Look at the offense for Columbus. Three hits on the day. Wojciechowski was great, and Garcia was decent. I mean... I can't even say decent. He was good. He was better. He was better than last time. They just couldn't capitalize. You know, Columbus offense, they really got to figure this thing out. All right, let's move on to this matchup here. We've got Santa Fe and Pittsburgh. The Spirit against the Hammers. Ryan Weathers, the lefty, coming on out. First batter, Keon Broxton, going to hit one right back to him. A nice little comebacker there. Second batter up, he gets the second one. What are the odds of that? Jeez, oh, Pete. So Ryan Weathers got two up, two down here, and then a strikeout on Wilson Contreras. So early inning success here for Ryan Weathers. The other lefty, a custom prospect, Jimmy Polanski, who has a 109 ERA with no wins yet. So he's looking for his first GGBL win, his first professional win as a pitcher. He's pitching pretty well here right now. Connor Altman, guys, is no slouch. He is a rookie, but he is a pretty darn good player, a custom player. And now you got to face Aaron Judge, who's hitting 200 on the season. Polanski says, I don't know, it's a, it's a close game still. He's still a very good hitter. I don't really want to mess around too much with him. you got to respect Aaron Judge, even though he does strike out a lot, right? And he's hitting 200 right now in GGBL action. Either way, Polanski gets out of the inning with nothing armed against him. Judge in right field makes a nice play. Gets it back in quickly. Holding Jamie Romack to just a double. Now double leaders. He's one of the highest rated here with five for Santa Fe. We got Vargas here going to strike out. And Weathers continues to pitch well. Here's a line drive all the way over center fielder's head. That's going to be a home run for Patrick Wisdom. So in real life, kind of what Patrick Wisdom is doing a lot of right now. Hitting a lot of home runs. 415-foot blast to left center field. 1-0 Santa Fe. Keon Broxton strikes out looking. Ryan Weathers says, I got to settle down and get it back again. But Andrioli, got to make him pay. 
That's two home runs in this inning. And the Spirit have now taken a 2 to nothing lead. Good swing by Wisdom. Good swing by Andrioli. Now Polanski has a good shot to get that first GGBL win. And dare I say it, guys, he is currently throwing a no-no. That's happening. He's currently throwing a no-no. Oh, no! Spoiled it again. I got to stop doing that. JJ Blade is going to try for two. He's going to get in for a double right down the line. First baseline, no less. So JJ Blade gets it done, but his teammates cannot drive him in. So it's still a 2 0 game. And Ryan Weathers now checks out of the game. Martin Tate comes on in here at the top of the fifth inning. So he didn't throw a lot of pitches. Just must not have had a ton of stamina. But the first batter that Martin Tate has to pitch against, it's Patrick Wisdom again. He hits home run at number two of the day. Patrick Wisdom is going off right now. 426 foot blast is three to nothing. Now Christian Vasquez comes up, gets a single right in front of the outfielders. Didn't split them, but he did hit right in front of them. And now Polanski's thinking, man, I mean, I'm still, I'm still in a position to win the game. It's three nothing, even if it's a home run here, it doesn't count against me. I'm still in position to win here, but relief pitcher does give up the sack fly run. Is now three to one here with the runner on first base. Broxton camps underneath this one, makes the play, and Santa Fe gets out of the inning. Top of the sixth, Jamie Romack in a strikeout against Martin Tate. So Tate has kind of settled down here a little bit. Andrioli is going to K as well. Rooker, I should say. Rooker strikes out as well. So here's Judge. Is he finally going to do something for Pittsburgh? Yes. He knocks a base hit to center field. And Broxton, <laughs> dude, Judge is struggling, man. Judge is struggling real hard. And he says, you know what? I haven't had a lot of these opportunities. I'm flying high. He gets into second base as Keon Broxton does not get the ball in quick enough. Now look at Judge just flying around third and headed for home. Pittsburgh now only down by one thanks to Judge's hustle. So on that base knock, he hustled to second. On that base hit, he hustled from second to home. Not oftentimes you're going to see that. The guy scoring from second to home on that type of hit. Now Jason Kipnis gets on with a single, and now you got runners on the corners, and Bubba Thompson strikes out. Connor Altman comes up. He's had his struggles against Jimmy Polanski, the lefty, but against the righty, that is a home run to tie the game. And he's got a little Edward Encarnacion type of <laughs> home run celebration there. So Connor Altman, clutch home run. Jesse Chavez checks in, and J.J. Blade. Broke up the no-no early in the game, and he's going to break the tie for a solo home run. I'd get pumped up if you guys were Pittsburgh Hammers fans, man. Got Bubba Thompson up with a runner at second base, and everybody knew this one was gone, including the left fielder. Didn't even move. Two-run shot for Bubba Thompson, his first of his GGBL career. And Pittsburgh all fired up because they get a win at home. And it's a good win at home. Santa Fe's no slouch, man. They're pretty They're pretty solid. They're pretty good out there in that American League West. So good win for Pittsburgh. Chavez was the guy that got settled for the loss there. Nicasio gets the win. Just unfortunate for Chavez to have to give up those two home runs in that third of an inning that he pitched. So unfortunately for Santa Fe, they just couldn't hold off that Pittsburgh Hammers offense, which is actually one of the worst in the game, statistically. Worst in the league. But good to kind of see those guys in Pittsburgh kind of figure it out. All right, let's move out to Copperhead Brewing Company Park. We've got the Houston Copperheads against the LA Knights. And we've got two opposing pitcher styles. We've got Louis Perdomo, more of a put the ball in play, ground ball type of guy. And then we've got Akito Radon, a custom prospect that is going to be a strikeout type of pitcher. So he's not going to be a guy that likes to get contact. He's not a guy that invites contact. He wants his he wants his defense to not have to make a bunch of plays for him. He wants to be the guy to get to get all the outs, to get all the strikeouts. But so far, it's been a defensive game all the way around. Nice play by Nick Mayton, and then a nice play out here in right field by Michael Conforto. 
Bottom of the third, Houston can't score any runs. Can't scratch across any runs. Now take a look at this play from Drew Waters. Woo! That's awesome. I, I can appreciate some good defense, man, out in the outfield because that's, that's my game all the way is defense in the outfield. Offensively, I'm, I mean, I'm, I'm okay, but it's not it's not my game, man. Why do you think the channel's named Gold Glover 9? Either way, defense all the way around, and Akita Radon gets another strikeout. Now, take a look here at Mike Yastrzemski from out of nowhere makes the play in right field. Okay. There's a lot of room out there. It's kind of like Oakland Coliseum. There's a lot of room in these created stadiums in foul ground in order to make those types of plays here but take a look here we got a base knock finally we got a base hit somewhere we got we got runners we got runners and go figure it's Gregory Polanco the guy has been on fire all year long hitting 370 in the month of April so you can't hold him and if you do you can only hold him for so long two down here an opportunity for Houston. They can't cash in. They can't get it done. McMate makes the play. And we're going to go to the top of the sixth inning. Now, some more good defense. Nice play. Nice play from third base. Nick Castellano says, let's break the tie. Stay fair. Stay fair. He thinks it does, but umpire says, nope. Come on back, sir. We got a ground ball to Perdomo. He makes the throw. And the top of the seventh starts off with another out. Now, we got the shift going on here. Defense makes another great play. Let's go to the bottom of the seventh inning. And then we got Josh Donaldson up. And Corey Lee, the catcher, throws him away. He leads Ronald Guzman off the bag. And Radon's day is done. Ethan Small, the lefty, has to come on and get the job done. Now, ground ball here to third base. Back to second. Mayton makes the throw. To Guzman, they double up Houston. They got two down here in the bottom of the seventh inning. But Gregory Polanco says it's time to put that batting average to good use. He breaks the tie late in the game. 402-foot shot, and the fans are going crazy out here. They love it. This guy has been on it in some kind of hot streak, man. Some kind of hot streak. But don't think that it's over. Bottom of the eighth inning. Bases juiced. Keeboom is going to strike out here. They're going to go with the righty, Zach Birdie, with bases juiced and one down and a walk. They are going to walk in Ciarte for the tying run to plate. Ugh, that's brutal. You got you got to figure that out. But Luis Basave is going to strike out here and then a little pop up. That is going to be huge for Houston to get out of that little jam that they faced here. Let's see Nick Mayton ground ball with a runner on first and second base, but they're only going to get one. Now runners on the corners as Drupal can't get the throw off, at least not in time. Now here's, look at this backhanded play, third base across the diamond. Game remains tied here in the 12th inning. Let's go to the bottom of the 12th. Gregory Polanco is up. Can he do some more damage? right into the shift and Houston ends the 12th so more good defense all the way around Nick Castellanos had that shot a little earlier in the game looking for a big hit here runner will slide in safely to second base that puts the pressure on Houston and Castellanos delivers LA a team that we know can hit the long ball Castellanos hits a two-run shot, and L.A. is going to call on Ryan Brazier to get the save. Little chopper, little jam job. Connor Joe makes the play. More good defense all the way around. Uh-oh. L.A. gives up a base hit. Two-run game. The, the tying run comes up to the plate, and it's going to be a little lazy fly ball out to Conforto. The Copperheads are down to one more out. Can they get it done? No. Strike three. Ryan Brace here gets the save. Great game, man. Great game. One of the best ones that I've that I've been able to watch when recording these games, guys. So that was a fun one. A lot of good defense. A lot of good highlights that we caught in this one. But unfortunately for Houston, they just couldn't get the W against a pretty solid hitting team. 
in LA. Let's move out to Colorado and Portland. Portland finally gets a home game that we've seen for them at Water Ridge Field. This is one of those stadiums that we might need to have uh, created for Portland. Tuki Tucson is going to get the start here for the Pioneers, and it's a 1-2-3 inning for the young right-hander. Brendan McKay, a two-way player, a guy that can go a little, a little two-way action. So take a look at his athleticism. It's on full display there. As a pitcher, he makes the play in front of his own dugout and says, well, this is an easy walk back. One runner on and Luis Campusano, the catcher for Colorado. We saw him hit a home run in the last episode on GGBL opening day, and he's going to get a RBI double to lead off the scoring for Colorado. Now take a look here. Jake Rogers can't corral the wild pitch. Campusano, the catcher, says, that's all right. I understand wild pitches and I understand the angles so I can go I can get in there pretty safely and he does fly ball here to center field and they're going to get the extra run in so that hustle play that knowledge play that baseball IQ play Luis Camposano gets Colorado another run here McKay going to strike out Jake Rogers and Tim Anderson comes up in the top of the fourth inning and it looks like he's going to get on with a single nope he's going to get real aggressive and go for two He's going to get the call. That's Major League Baseball IQ right there. And plus, he's probably looking around at the at his clubhouse saying, you know what, I want to get back up there with the doubles totals. I want to get back up there. I'm the best hitter on the team. I got to get it done. Will Meyer says, that's okay, Tim. I'm the best hitter on the team. <laughs> so you have this healthy competition going back and forth between these guys. So two-run shot for Will Myers, and the inning just doesn't seem to want to end for Tuki Tucson in the fourth so he's going to get taken out here after a single and then a walk you've got runners on first and second base here rico garcia comes in with a 304 era and with two down ramos makes the play that's a really nice play for a pitcher to get that done paxton burnside top of the sixth goes deep center field another home run to center field this dude has some serious some serious power. He goes to deep center field, hit the batter's eye at the top of the batter's eye in Coyotes Park the last time we saw him, and he's going to hit the batter's eye here in Water Ridge Field. And Mikey White hits his third home run of the season. That's a three-run shot. Gets the lead up to eight to Zippo. Colorado will end up winning the game here, to no surprise. 11 to 1. Portland did score one run in the bottom of the ninth inning, and obviously it just was not enough to help Tuki Tucson to recover. So he gets saddled with the loss, unfortunately, for him. Campusano, Burnside, and Will Myers. Notable players that had really good games. Let's move out to Nuggets Field. 18 and 9 against 14 and 12. The Washington Swamp Monsters. Obviously a very good hitting team, and it's gonna be interesting to see how Braylon Marquez, the young lefty, does against these guys very interesting matchup here but Marquez looks pretty solid he looks like he's got it under control and he's going to end the first inning with no runs across Brent Honeywell Jr. not pitching too great man not pitching too great so the Nuggets want to be a little aggressive this is how they've been all season long they love to run Malik Smith gonna make them pay utilizing that speed gets into second on a little Texas leaguer that's insane. Freddie Freeman, though, can't cash in here. Gets the strikeout. And then you've got a fly ball to center field with runners on first and second. Puig is going to round second here, but center fielder is going to make the play for Washington. Matt Kemp. Third base, Andy Abanez makes the throw. Ugh. You want to see some of these old guys actually have some success. At least I do. I want to see Matt Kemp like have a career renaissance thing going on. Now Alexander King, custom player, going to go to left field here, down all the way down the line to the wall, and he's going to get in for a double. Going to get a good strikeout here. That's Marquez getting the K. Runner will move from second to third, but catcher Marshawn is going to make the play. The easy play right in front of him. Oh, look at Hey, 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 what do we got here? 
Top of the third. Runners trying to steal. Marquez with the pickoff move gets the out. That's going to pr prove costly. That's going to prove clutch for Las Vegas, but costly for Washington. Brock Holt gets a double. That would have been the first run scored. Definitely. The first run scored for Washington. Now Joey Votto is going to strike out here against the lefty. And Votto, the uh, the age is starting to show. I, I hate I hate to say it, but Joey, you know, you got to maybe performing a little bit better here with against minor league type of guys. Definitely need to be performing better. Freddie Freeman's doing fine. Like, come on, Joey. Come on, Joey V. Show your stuff. Yasiel Puig going to strike out here. So both teams going back and forth, not being able to cash in on their running, runners in scoring position here. So Honeywell pumps the fist, gets pumped up here. Let's go to the bottom of the fourth inning. Good defensive play. No! Joey Votto's pulled off the bag. Brock Holt, set your feet, man. You got some time there. You definitely had some time. But Honeywell Jr. is going to get knocked out of this game in a tie ball game, too, in the bottom of the fourth inning. Reliever does come on in here. Votto makes the play at first. And still, it remains a nothing-nothing game. Now, a good defensive play here from Andy Ibanez, and they're going to turn the double play in time. Nuggets keep the game tied. Nothing, nothing. Rod Krenzel, we saw his hustle type of play against Santa Fe in opening day action in that walk-off win. Spoiler alert, if you guys did not watch that episode, please do. He extended his hitting streak down to up, down, up to 14 games. Up to 14 games for Rod Krenzel. 3-1 count for Puig. Base knock to left. Are they going to get super aggressive? They are. Here comes the throw from left to home. That's offline. And Krenzel scores the first run of the game. Puig with the nice shot. And Krenzel with the hustle yet again. Here is Orlando Arcia. Base knock over center fielder's head. That's going to score the runner from first. And Arcia gets a double. It's now 2-0. Let's go from the bottom of the fifth inning where Arcia got that double. Let's go to the bottom of the sixth. We've got Krenzel again. Delivers another hit. He already extended his hitting streak, so he's feeling real good. And this one's going to be an RBI double. Nice swing there. High fastball. Good pitch to hit. And Krenzel gets it to 3-0. Let's jump forward to the top of the ninth. We got a 4-0 game as Vegas tacked on another run. But look, this apparently did not get ruled. A ground rule double. And Brandon Lowe is going to go in with a triple. A one-out triple gives Washington maybe some new life here. Base knock by Matt Kemp. And Lowe is going to score. It is a three-run game with a runner on. A lot can happen here with one down. So, Sean Gilmartin gets pulled for Aaron Slagers. He's going to strike out Alexander King. That is a huge out. Righty on righty. Let's go to the next batter. We've got a 1-2 count. That's going to be down the line. Krenzel can't make the play in air. He will field it cleanly, though. Gets the throw back in to avoid the runner going to third. But we get a walk. Slagers can't come through. It is now bases loaded. Only down by three, and the ump just missed a call. I feel like he missed that call. Reinheimer is going to get to first on a walk. An RBI walk is now four to two. One, two count. Washington pops it up. Ibanez has to make a play at the wall. He does make the play just before running into it. <laughs> That's a gutsy, gutsy play for Andy Ibanez. But you know what? Anything for the win. Anything for your team. And your teammates. Slagers pumped up, and I would be too. Teammates coming through for you like that in a clutch moment, and they get it done. Las Vegas gets a win, guys. 4-2 to two over Washington. And again, Washington just losers in gameplay. I'm still waiting for this team. I mean, they've got a decent record. They're one of the better teams in the league. I just, I'm, I'm waiting. I'm waiting for them to come through in gameplay for you guys and uh, show you what they're really made of. All right, let's move out to our last game on the docket for tonight. We've got New Orleans against St. Louis, a NL Central matchup. And you know, I'm still playing with the idea of not calling it the American League or National League. I'm not really sure what I want to call it. Maybe like the Glove League? No. Can't do that. The Golden League? No. Can't do that. What do you guys think? You guys come up with it in the comments section below. 
Let's talk about this matchup, guys. We've got Jaron Duran covering a ton of ground. That's right fielder's ball, man. That is right fielder's ball, but Jaron Duran, the athletic center fielder, making that play look easy. It's 1-0 in New Orleans off that sack fly, and Andrew Donovan now has two strikeouts against Trevor Bauer. He's a very tough pitcher for anybody, especially this league where you've got a bunch of rookies and you've got these minor league players, right? Very tough, tough customer to try to go up and hit against, but take a look at Darnell Sweeney. Really pushing the envelope and getting aggressive, and that's kind of the, the objective here. You have to be aggressive against Trevor Bauer and this New Orleans swing team in order to beat them. It's already hard enough. Might as well just play play real hard, man. Play real hard. Try to put that pressure on these guys and, and get them out of their comfort zone. Because right now, Bauer's in a groove. Everything looks like it's going to be trending towards that win for New Orleans, especially right now. Base knock with runners on the corners. Runners will move up a base. Runners on first and second. Algaier gives up the base hits. Two to nothing, New Orleans. We jump here to the top of the ninth inning. It's still a 2-0 game. Now New Orleans giving up a run. Donovan will score. The lead is now cut down to one run. So is St. Louis going to do this again? Are they going to come all the way back? Just like they did against Nashville the last time we saw them. Strike three call. Chaz Rowe gets the call on Neftali Soto. Got two down. That's not going to get it done. Jaron Duran strikes out, man, and uh, Trevor Bauer says, yeah, we lucked out on that one, I think, a little bit, but tough game all the way around. Seven hits for New Orleans, five hits for St. Louis, one error on the ledger, and Trevor Bauer, again, has another solid, solid game, going eight innings and multiple, multiple strikeouts. That is going to be it for tonight's upload. Leave a like, guys, if you like this thing, and keep in mind, over on Thursday, Thursday night, we're going to be covering Indiana, New York. Atlanta, Michigan, Wisconsin, Minnesota, Oklahoma, Seattle, Richmond, Philadelphia will be a game live streamed over on the Purple platform on Wednesday. So keep in mind that, and then we're going to throw that game's highlights into the Thursday highlight reel upload. So a little refresher here, I don't talk about that. Indiana, New York, Atlanta, Michigan, Wisconsin, Minnesota, Oklahoma, Seattle, Richmond will be live stream on Wednesday, but will be thrown in the Thursday highlight reel. Miami, Carolina, Dallas and Nashville, and San Francisco, San Diego. So yes, there's eight games there, but really that's how you gotta break it down, right? So you gotta get to 15 and 15 at some, some way, somehow. Now keep in mind guys, because Friday is supposed to be a game of the week, we and how this all matched up on the first, second, and the third, how this all matched up with the teams that are being shown. Michigan and Las Vegas will be the game of the week. Now, why is this the game of the week? Well, because, as we will see here, the actually, I don't want to do that. Michigan and Las Vegas will be the game of the week, guys, because, if we look at the standings here, we have the Nuggets at 10-6 and six at home. We haven't seen them on the road yet, but they're 10-6 and six at home. They have a very good pitching staff. The Mallards have one of the best offenses in the game, and they're 14 and one on the road. That's crazy. 14 and one on the road. They're absolutely cleaning it up out there when they have to travel. So, guys, Mallards road game, Nuggets home game. Nuggets have good pitching. Let's see if they can hold off and stave off the Michigan Mallards, guys. That is going to be it for tonight's episode. Leave a like if you like this thing. I will see you guys back here on Wednesday for Richmond Good Boy Baseball over on the Purple Platform. We'll be taking on the Philadelphia Flight on the road. So again, we're going to see Richmond on the road. We haven't seen them at home yet. And then we actually have seen the Philadelphia Flight at home already. So that's on Wednesday. Thursday will be just a normal upload, a highlight reel upload. And then Friday will be the game of the week. Michigan and Las Vegas. So guys, leave a like if you like this thing. I will see you then. As always, thank you for watching and peace.